savor the Southwest. Um, our site is about homesteading and making food here in the Southwest. And we feature a lot of Southwest recipes. Um, and mind you, that doesn't mean they're just all spicy. It means they use uh, products of, of Southwest um, gardens and foraging. And um, one of the things that's uh, ready right now, as I'm making this, is the lemon on my tree. And so I'm gonna make myself a treat, which is really fresh um, uh, mayonnaise. It's got five ingredients in it, and it's using fresh squeezed lemon from my um, lemon tree. So, five ingredients. What you need to make mayonnaise, you don't need all the gook that's in the mayonnaise that you buy in the store. Um, you need some salt, you need eggs, you need lemon juice, mustard, and oil. And part of the reason we're using lemon juice and mustard is that they are emulsifiers, and sorry for the big word, but what they do is they help take the oil and make it into this nice thick product. They emulsify the oil and they turn it into something you can spread on your bread or make your egg salad out of or whatever you're doing. So um, that's the reason mustard and lemon juice are found in mayonnaise. Now, um, a little bit about each of the ingredients before we mix them together. Um, I have here some kosher salt and I'm not going to use that. And that's because it's a salt that has its flakes. It's very good to spread on meat because it's flakes and it dissolves very quickly. Um, but it's not what we want for our mayonnaise. So it goes out of here. We are going to use plain old iodized calcium chloride salt. Um, if you have a low salt diet, you can make this with potassium chloride. It's called the low salt salt. Um, and you can find that in various um, supermarkets. So we're gonna use salt. And um, all the ingredients, the recipe is gonna be down below the um, YouTube video in that uh, box. And you might have to click read more to read the recipe. Now you do need three eggs, but um, the recipe I'm following uh, says that you can use three quarters of a cup of egg beaters. We just use whole eggs. Here's a secret though to using the eggs. You want to make sure they're room temperature. Makes a much better product. Uh, thickens up right away. Um, this way we're move, using everything that's at the same temperature. If you use cold eggs in your mayonnaise, it doesn't work as well. Just the voice of experience. I, I Used to use it with cold eggs and um, couldn't figure out why sometimes there was it was just runny afterwards. And then I learned the secret. And um, well, actually, I didn't learn the secret. I thought about it a little bit. And I, I've said this before on some of my videos: the sharpest tool in your kitchen is your brain. <laughs> sometimes mine ain't sharp enough, but you know, I just sort of thought about it and I was thought. Okay, these eggs are right out of the ice box and everything else is room temperature. Well, actually, the, um, the lemon juice had been right out of the ice box, too. So once I warmed everything to the same temperature, oh, man, my mayonnaise turns out perfect every time. So warm eggs, warm lemon juice. Well, that's not a problem if you just harvest your lemon off the tree and squeeze it. And um, by the way, you can see here, it's an old plastic bottle. I usually use glass. I'm running low on glass bottles right now. But you can squeeze a couple of lemons at a time and put them in the fridge. Definitely do not store them on the um, countertop. But the fact of the matter is, uh, this will last a couple of weeks in the fridge. Now, you're not going to use it right away. Throw it in the freezer. So, hanging on to the drink bottles. Um, probably glass bottles are, are better for you, so you're not taking so much plastic in your life. So we've got our salt, our eggs, our lemon juice, a little bit about mustard. Um, I did purchase my store-bought mustard here. 
and I used to make this with the Chinese mustard. And my spouse was like, oh, no way, it's too hot, I can't eat the mustard, or the mayonnaise. So um, I searched around and I found a place to bulk buy mustard. And um, there's a, a number of places that can do it, and you can buy it online at uh, like SanFranciscoHerbs.com. I think it's SFHerbs.com and FrontierHerbs.com. And those links will be down below too. Uh, oh, I shouldn't say. Maybe I won't put those links in because they're not sponsoring me. Anyway, um, so you can buy these um, if you want, or you can grow it. Mustard grows really well in the winter in my garden. It's like all over the place. And I just harvest the seeds, and I could grind these with my mortar and pestle. And I have both white mustard and brown mustard. And to tell the truth, the white mustard grows a little better and kind of makes a nicer mayonnaise. But... <laughs> I'm also kind of like lazy today, so I just took it out of my bulk. Okay. Now the last ingredient is oil. And you look at this. This is not for the people that are f afraid of eating oil. Okay. Mayonnaise is made with oil and eggs, basically. And um, the first time I ever had homemade mayonnaise, I think I was about 15 years old. And I watched this woman who sat there with a whisk and hand whisked it and made her own mayonnaise. And that stuff was out of this world. I do like electricity. It, it powers blenders and makes it much easier than sitting there and whisking. But it's kind of interesting to think that, you know, they could have been making mayonnaise you know, 6,000 years ago. I don't know, I, I, I don't have a Wayback Machine, but that would be fun to go find out. Now, about the oil, um, I use olive oil. Um, it's a low temperature cooking oil. It's wonderful for salads. I get the organic um, in gallons, <laughs> and I transfer it to my little kitchen one. You can use avocado oil, you can use any oil at all that you like using. You can use canola if you want. Um, you could use soybean oil. Uh, I cannot eat soybeans. Um, I can't, um, all legumes are a little bit iffy for me. So I make sure it's a nice, pure, organic olive oil. But use whichever oil you like the flavor of and experiment, you know. Make it with some olive oil, make it with some canola oil. See which tastes better to you because this is, you're gonna be eating this. So, what I've learned over time, because once I put the powders in first, um, it's five ingredients, right? Once upon a time, I would put the powder in first, and then I would find that sometimes it didn't get mixed up. So I have found that it's best to put the eggs in first, and the oil we are going to drizzle in at the very last. That is the last ingredient. So, we're gonna start with eggs, now, how many of you want to crack it right there? Don't do that. If you crack it on an edge, you tend to get pieces of eggshell in whatever you're cooking. Egg, at edge of the pan when you're making fried eggs. Crack it on a nice flat surface, and then you don't get shells in your um, what you're cooking. Now, um, I'm just going to throw these here for now. but. <laughs> This is a baker. I am used to doing it one-handed. You can do it two-handed. You know, and put your little thumb in there and crack it open. And uh, either way, whatever works for you. Kind of a vanity, I guess, to baker one-handed. <laughs> you know, doing it as fast as you can. When you uh, cook a recipe that calls for 36 eggs, you do it double-handed. And we have contests when there was two of us uh, baking <laughs> in one store. That's a whole other story. Anyway, you put in your eggs. Uh, oh, I should have said. So this recipe calls for three eggs, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon and a half of mustard. Now, we like ours mustardy, so this is actually two teaspoons. So you can, you can fudge a little bit. Just don't under fudge on the, on, the, on the mustard. You really want at least a teaspoon and a half. Four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. 
And I have tried making this with that concentrated lemon juice that you can buy in the store. It, again, it came out runny. So there's something in that fresh lemon that works. And I will also say, I, I told you before, you could take this and you could throw it in the freezer. It's the fresh squeezed. Maybe there's even something in the, I don't know. Anyway, uh, fresh squeezed or freshly squeezed and frozen, you still, your four tablespoons. Okay, now we're gonna put the lid on because if you don't put the lid on, this goes everywhere and that can be quite exciting. A lot of fun to clean up. And um, I take this little lid thing off because I'm gonna drizzle my oil in through the center. And you wanna drizzle for 30 seconds. You want all the drizzling done in 30 seconds. So it's gonna look like I'm pouring pretty quick, but you don't just dump it in. So um, this is the noisy part. Um, if any of you have a Vitamixer, um, you know how noisy it is. And what you do is you turn it on, on variable, and then you turn it up to the speed you want. And so this is, it's a little bit different than a blender, but a blender, you want to turn it on basically the highest speed you got. Okay, so. How the sound changed. I can't talk about it while I'm doing this, but the sound changed when it was basically done mixing up. Now here's the thing. You open it up and you go, it's still a little watery. It's still wiggling a little bit. Let's pick up the other camera. It's still kind of a little watery looking. That's because it's hot in there. Okay? When you blend things at like a million miles per hour, I don't know what the RPM is. Um, when you blend things like this, the molecules are just getting so excited and they're hot. But I guarantee you when this, you, you pour this and you pour this while it's still a little bit hot into whatever jar you're gonna keep it in. And it will, uh, it'll pour more easily if you pour it just after you mix it. And once you put it in the fridge, it's gonna get nice and solid. Now I'm gonna have to grab the jar because I wasn't quite ready for this. I'm gonna show you as we pour it out. See how nicely that pours? Don't worry, it'll solidify. And if you're really concerned about the fact that there's some lumps of oil or some things of oil, you can start with a spoon. Here's the the only problem with the Vitamixer is getting that last little bit out of the bottom. Ah, oh, sigh. That's when you get your hand in there. Or maybe a... Um, spatula. And... Nice and solid. Nice and clumpy. So, um, I'm actually going to make some uh, creamy salad dressing with this bottom part. So I'm not going to clean it out too much. And that's another thing. Now say the whole reason for making some mayonnaise is because you wanted to make a nice creamy dressing. And I do this a lot. Basically mayonnaise and olive juice. Okay, Salt is not bad in my world. So I'm just going to take this and put a little olive juice in there. It's going to help me clean out the, the blender. You don't have to do this if you, whatever you do though, um, just uh, you either have to clean it well with, with this or with these and I've no, been known to get in there and kind of wipe it off on the jar. But clean it up now. Don't put it away on the counter and say I'll get it to it later. Because it just, it, stuff starts hardening, especially here in the Southwest, we have very dry air. 
and, it, and then it's harder to clean. So the sooner you clean your dishes, the better. Okay. And all of this video was just because I have my salad all ready and waiting for me to eat. I pack up salads for myself and my husband at the same time. And that's my salad dressing. <laughs> and see how nice and almost clean the blender is? <laughs> anyway, getting off on a topic here. That's it. That's the simple five ingredient um, mayonnaise, homemade. Uh, if you buy a quart of mayonnaise, it's usually, what, about four dollars a quart? Um, because I use two cups of, of oil and these other ingredients, mm, I maybe, maybe tops spent 50 cents for a quart. So 50 cents versus four dollars. If you're trying to save money, make your own mayonnaise. It's a, it's a simple answer. It takes time, but I guarantee you I'd rather have the cash in my pocket to spend on other things than giving it to some major massive corporation that has more money than they need. And this way, I've got a healthy product, I know what's in it, and there's no artificial ingredients. So five ingredient mayonnaise, thanks for watching, savor the Southwest. I forgot to tell you this, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Okay, we are building our YouTube video uh, site at this time. So I'm supposed to tell you to like us if you like this video. Um, go ahead and share it if you, if you want to. Uh, we would love that. But subscribe because we are working very hard to have a new post up every single week. And um, more on cooking and savoring the Southwest. It's a little bit cold out there and nothing's really ready, but wait till you see our foraging videos. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, we've got a few in the can and we're going to edit them and get them up here. So like us and subscribe so you can learn how to forage as well as cook here in the Southwest. Thanks for watching. Okay, I do watch um, videos on other cooking YouTubes and they always do this. They always go, mmm, this came out great. You're going to love it. Um, Oh, it did come out great. You're going to love it. Um, see, I already went right back to my pajamas. I, I just wanted to come in and show you. See how, how um, nice and solid that is? Any mayonnaise is going to be a little bit flexible, but basically, it solidified right up. It's maybe about 10 minutes after I made the main video. So it solidifies fast. Don't, don't worry about this. The whole key point is drizzle fast within 30 seconds get all that oil into your mix and now i am going to go eat my salad thanks for watching